Hello everyone this is part 1 of what if Naruto was betrayed and turns evil, this story is made by Naruto Plug, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to see more comment down below. A boy with sun kissed runs into a dead end with a wall many times taller than him. The boy's name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikas, the so called demon of the village because he holds the soul of the Kyubi, a terrible monster which attacked the village of Konoha the day he was born and the soul was sealed into him by his own father, Minato Namikas, the fourth Hokage and leader of the village. He knew his father hated him and the rest of his family did, too. His mother, Kushina Uzumaki Namikas, agreed with his father to abandon him because she believed he became the demon that he held inside of him. Naruto's younger twin brother, Menma, and his younger twin sister, Mito, each held 50% of the Kyubi's yokai and were both treated like heroes for it. Naruto never felt love in his life, never truly smiled to anyone or has anyone smile at him. He never felt joy for anything, including his own life. All his life he was hated, beaten, tortured, glared at, for something he had no control over. He never asked to be a Jinchuriki, nor did he ask to be hated. But even through all this, he kept the facade of wanting to protect the village. He smiled at those that glared at him, knowing that every glare built his hatred to the villagers and family. Especially his family. They casted him aside like garbage and don't think twice about it. His parents cursing his name even though they were the people who made him. Now he about to suffer another beating to the civilians and ninjas of the village, all because of his father. I've found the demon, one of the villagers cried. This is the fate you deserve, another on said. And this was the start of it all. This beating seemed to have more people, meaning more of the pain he had to suffer through. He balled up as he received his unfair punishment. The pain that he received was unmeasured. A six-year-old boy shouldn't go through this. Nobody should. How they treated him made no sense to him. His family abandoning for something they did, the villagers' hatred because their ignorance. His hidden hatred for everything. Everything was against him in this world and he knew that. He learned at a young age that he lived for himself and himself only, even though he hid his feelings behind the smile that he so hates. He lived under one motto that he made himself and never told anyone. Live, fight, and love only yourself. That's what it's was and how it was since he could remember of his small life. Damn it, it looks like we killed it before we could do more to it. One of the people of the mob said. And he was right. Naruto's body looked like a bulging red stain coming out the ground. Mutilated in every way possible. But the villager was wrong about one thing. Naruto wasn't dead, he was unconscious. Mindscape Kurama's cage, where am I? Naruto thought to himself as he looked around the sewer he was currently in. The villagers probably threw me down here to let me die. It's time find a way out. He thought as he looked around. While looking around, Naruto found a big cage with the kanji for seal on a piece of paper in the middle of the cage. What is this cage doing here? Is this where the Kyubi's soul? As he got closer to the cage he saw what seemed to be a human-shaped figure in the darkness of the cage. Come here child, said a deep voice inside the cage. Nope, not going into the scary dark cave. I'm not like those stupid people in the movies, said Naruto and he turned away from the cage. Will you come in now? Asked a soft voice that held kindness in it. Naruto turned around and saw in the cage a woman with red-haired woman with a beauty that was unmeasured. Her hair made it to the middle of her back but looked smooth and lustrous. She had a heart-shaped face with a smile that would warmest smile that would melt any cold-hearted person. She had a slime waist and the most smooth-looking arms and legs and double DD breast that made her look even more amazing. Don't worry child, I won't hurt you, she said. Naruto, going against what he said about the people in scary movies, walked straight into the cage towards the woman. Who are you? asked Naruto with her innocent face that swooned the woman. Me. I'm the nine-tailed fox, can't you tell? she said as she turned around and showed him nine eight feet. Tails coming from her tailbone. Oh, ah, that's nice to know. He said, you, dot you aren't afraid of me, she said in a confused tone. Ah, uh, you're too pretty to be afraid of. And you seem to niece, even if people call you an evil fox. Really now, how surprising it is for a child to finally understand me and to talk too. 
My name is Kurama, what is your name, child? My name is Naruto, and I'm going to be the next Hogak, believe it. He said. Kurama looked at the boy and started giggling and then said. Boy if it wasn't for my powers, I would have believed your lie for a second. What are you talking about, said Naruto in a frantic voice, thinking someone finally caught on to his secret. I'm not lying about anything. I can tell you're lying, do you want to know why, she says. Then she gets behind him and wraps her arms around him and whispers in his ear, I can feel the hate welled up in your chest, locked up so tight no one would notice it. The minimum love in your heart is only to yourself, but we can change that. She said. Naruto looked up to her with wide eyes with his secret reveled. He felt so uneasy now. Naruto, what is your real goal? Kurama said. My real goal, he said then turned away from her with doubt. You can tell me. I won't hate you like everyone else. I'm the only person you can trust. Talk to me, she said with a calm voice. I, I, I want them dead, Naruto said with a dead voice that surprised Kurama. I want them all dead and suffer the way I did these years. To feel their fear instead of their hate. To claw through them one by one till they're all gone. Then he looked right into Kurama's eyes with a powerful killing intent that he was releasing without him knowing, surprising Kurama even further. I want K-O-N-A-H-A -A to burn. Kurama smiled at Naruto with a dark look. Then let me help you, and if you do, we will both see Konoha burn to ashes. Then she opened her arms to Naruto in a hug-like manner which he accepted. Finally, somebody I can trust. He said and closed his eyes and fell into the first hug he ever had. Yes Naruto, you can trust me. Trust me and only me, more than you trust yourself. Kurama thought to herself as she looked at Naruto with an evil smirk. Yes, you're mine now and no one else's. I'll make you more than strong, I'll make you my mate and have total control over you and what you do. She thought. Now let's take care of those bad people outside your head, shall we, she said with glee. Yes, Kurama-chan, he said with a dark voice. In the alleyway. Let's leave the body for the rats, said a villager. While the people were leaving the alley, they never noticed Naruto get back up, covered in red charka with an insane grin on his face, his wounds fully healed. Where are you going, said Naruto in a demonic tone. I'm still alive, can't you see that I'm still standing? Then, Naruto attacked, leaving no survivors. Everyone that participated in the mob were destroyed and killed in the worst way. The blood stained Naruto's already red shirt so much that it started to turn black. The wild look in his eyes as he tore through the village's bodies, ninja and civilian alike. His eyes, now red that replaced the blue that was once his eye color and a black slit in the middle, showed his insane glee as he murdered everyone in the alleyway. Nobody could stop him. He wouldn't stop this for the world. The first time he ever felt stronger than somebody, the first time to hurt his abusers. His first time at revenge. Hours later at the Hokage Tower, Hokage Sama something's happened in the village, said the advisor. Minato turned in his seat, showing his blonde hair and blue eyes with a fire within them. Show me, in the alleyway, what happened here, said one of the Anbu that came with the Hokage at the murder site. There floating in a pool of the village's blood was Naruto, unconscious. A smile on his face. During six years, what happened in the alley made Konoha scared. The demon started to fight back. This never happened before. The Hokage and his advisors were in heated debate telling what should they do with Naruto. Execution, banishment, anything was suggested. Minato was the one to come up with the solution. We will keep him underground in my mansion. I'll build a cell made by me personal to hold him down. He won't escape. I will place seals all over the walls that will hold the demon so it won't mature in its power. The seals will only respond to me and my wife, Kushina, Chaka so we can release it when the village is in times of peril. Nothing like this will ever happen, said the Hokage. Everyone agreed and in the Hokage's mansion was a cell. The door looked like a vault to a bank that held millions of dollars in it. When opened, a five-meter walk downstairs underground will lead you to a door and a window which should you Naruto's room. A slab of metal came out of the wall, a blanket and pillow was on top. To the side there was another room with a toilet, shower, and sink for personal needs. All around the cell were seals that blocked yokai. It was the perfect place to put Naruto. A perfect place for Kurama to take over Naruto as well. Naruto, while being looked up in the cell didn't stop him from training. Kurama would teach him inside the mindscape. 
Naruto also open up the seal for Kurama, but she didn't leave the seal saying, I have something to finish. And then give an evil grin to Naruto. Also throughout the years, Kurama started to get obsessed with Naruto. While he was younger, it wasn't really anything serious, but when he started to get older, that's when things started getting worried. Kurama would say that he belonged to her and that he would become a great mate for her. She told him that he would be her future mate when she fully turned Naruto into a demon. She start being forceful on him when he wouldn't do something right. Then she would start to force herself on him. She would have total control over Naruto since he opened the seal. Kurama took over the seal and made it her own domain. If Naruto started to run or fight back Kurama, she just make chains to hold him down while she did what she wanted to him for hours in the mindscape. He couldn't do anything about it. Now, instead of worrying about the villagers torturing him, he had Kurama to do it. And this wasn't something he could run away from. While Kurama would torture him in his mind, both physically and sexually, his mind continued to break. He had believed in Kurama and she took advantage of him. He almost thought that he didn't own himself. To not control when he was pulled into the mindscape and suffer almost more than what the villagers put him through was like another hell he went though. He went through this for six years by himself. Regardless of that, Kurama did train Naruto throughout the six years of being locked up. Naruto's elemental natures included fire and wind, a deadly combination. He focused more on wind jutsus than fire, but he was very advanced at both aspects. Kurama made Naruto claws out of her own chakra so he could use in the physical world. His fingers would fit in the middle of each compartment that held to him like a glove. At the end of the metal claws were four-inch curved nails that hurt just looking at them. Naruto could conduct his own yokai into them to make them even more deadly than they already were. Naruto also learned fuinjutsu, or seals. He was a natural atom advanced to seal master in a matter of years with hard work and Kurama's help. At the age of 10, Naruto could break out the chains that the Hokage had put on him that also had seals on them and run away, but Kurama said that staying in the cell was the safest place for him, much to his ire. While living in the cell, Kushina and Minato had to give him food and water for him to live. They much rather have him die, but the village needed a weapon to get the edge on other villages. Something else that no one knew except for Kurama and Naruto, was that Minato messed up sealing Kurama in the triplets. Minato accidentally sealed both 50% of Kurama's chakra and her soul into Naruto while the other 50% was split between Mito and Menma, Naruto's younger twin brother and sister. The only time Naruto saw the two was when he stated to go to the academy when he turned eight and joined it his first year. Minato wanted Naruto to have some strength so he could use him. But Naruto did horrible in the academy. Kurama wanted Naruto to hide his real strength to the world, so he did. During spars, he would only dodge his opponents and hit with small force behind his attacks, but if he ever went serious, he would be able to even beat Minato in a battle. Naruto learned all of Minato's famous jutsu, including the Raisingan and the Harishin, when he sneaked out of his cage and went into the mansion library and learned incredibly fast with his cage bush and jutsu. He also inherited Kushina's Chaka chain bloodline, which sometimes helped when he faced Kurama in battle in his mind. Naruto seemed to have the mysterious ability to absorb key killer intent and make him stronger, much to Kurama's delight. All in all, with all the training he received, the hate, and torture, made Naruto into a non-emotional killing machine. He was now a half-demon that showed no love to anyone at all, except for Kurama at times. Naruto still rejects Kurama's advances on him, making him have to go through more pain, making him more insane. Naruto has wild spiked blonde hair with some red streaks going through it, a muscular build, sharp nails on his fingers, three whisker marks on each side of his face that were heavily bold. Naruto's eyes were still the same as they were that night six years ago, red where blue used to be, and a slit in the middle of them. They also held the same single emotion they always had. Hatred. Naruto, age 12 inside the cell, wake up Naruto. Today is the day of graduation. You shouldn't miss this said Kurama from his mind. Zed Zed, Zed Zed clearly Naruto was knocked out. I hate it when he goes into his deep sleeps, it's like trying to wake up a rock. I know what will get him up though, she said to herself. Then she took a deep breath. Naruto dear, if you don't wake up for me, I'll rape you for hours upon hours with a sick glee, she said with a crazy voice.
Naruto instantly woke up, not wanting to go through the torture he's gone through before, and quickly started to change into his daily wear. He wore a black hoodie with the kanji for, 9, on the back in red ink. He wore black cargo shorts as well with many pockets to hold his ninja tools. On the sides of his shorts he attached his compartments which held his claws. The cases were blue in color. Naruto took a quick shower and waited for someone to open his cage door so he can go to school. After a while his mother, Kushinaruzumaki Namikas, opens the door with a plate of food she throws in front of Naruto. Hurry up and eat so you can leave, I can't stand the sight of you. She said with a hate-filled voice. Please leave, just looking at you makes me sick to my stomach. He said back with a monotone voice. Anger by his reply, she rushes out the door to leave from the demon's cage. TCH, woman. What was that, Naruto-kun, said Kurama out of nowhere with a demonic voice proving she had heard him. Nothing, he quickly says and leaves his cage. Outside the Hockage Mansion. Are you two ready for the exam? Did you make sure to bring all your supplies? Did you study? Oh my god, if you two didn't study, Kushina was hitting Menma and Mito with questions about their final day at the academy. Menma Uzumaki Namikas was 12 years old, the middle child of the triplets. He had blonde hair in a fashion just like his father's, only the tips of his hair was dyed with black giving him that cool look. He wore blue jumpsuit with the top part being black. Naruto's Shippuden jumpsuit only with the orange being replaced with blue. Menma was 5 feet 4 with an good build because of his father and mother's past training with him and his sister. Menma specialized in lightning jutsu that he learned from his father. The only thing he couldn't get to learn yet was how to make and conduct Chaka chains, unlike his mother and sister, but has gotten close to learning his father's harishin. Mito Uzumaki Namikas was an amazing looking girl. She had long flowing red hair that reached her butt, but her hair didn't curve around face like her mother. She wore her mother's old battle kimono from her genin days, which was a pale yellow in color, short-sleeved, with a black belt around her waist. To complete her look she wore long black leggings that hugged her legs delicately. Mito is 5 feet 2 and had a great tomboy look, still looked pretty to all the boys in the academy. Mito's elemental nature is water, making her train more under her mother than father. She has mastered her Chaka Chain's ability, but failed at learning the Haraishin. Kushina-chan, calm down. These two will have no problem in passing the exam. They are, after all, our children and prodigy. Said Minato with a loving smile to his wife. All right, Minato-kun, I believe you. You two just make sure you try your best and nothing will stop you from passing that exam, said an over-enthusiastic mother. Hi, Ka-chan. Don't worry, me and Ni-chan Menma will pass with everyone else in the dirt, exclaimed Mito. Yeah, me and Mito-chan will pass everyone, especially him. Said Menma, saying the last part while pointing his hand back to the house, everyone getting what he was saying. No matter what happens, I'm so proud of you too. These last six years have been good to you too. You're both on your own level with all the hard work you to put into your training. I'm proud to be your father. Said Minato with almost tears in his eyes. Then they all had a family moment with a group hug, but was interrupted by our favorite half-demon. Your expression of love is a terrible sight for me to see. Said Naruto with a monotone voice. What do you want, demon? Said Menma getting right into Naruto's face. Nothing. I am simply passing by, no reason to get loud. Said Naruto as he went around the family that he was excluded from. I shall not be late for the exam, this is the time for me to get out of the academy. He said and started walking away. That's if you even pass, which I doubt would happen. Said Mito with an angry scowl at Naruto's back. Naruto didn't reply but keep walking leaving the family behind. You two don't worry, I'll make sure that you have don't have him as a teammate. Now go to the academy and pass the exam, said Minato. With an excited cheer, Tatu ran up to the academy to finish their last year as academy students. At the academy Naruto was at the back of the class, looking at the paper that they were supposed to finish in one hour's time. He already knew all the answers, so answered them quickly. The Shuriken and Kunai test came up next, and he missed a couple points on the test on purpose putting him in fifth place in the class in accuracy. Next came the Justsu test in which was easier to him. Instead a regular Bunshin, he made a cage Bunshin instead. With the result of him overall passing the exam and making him a Genin. All right class, I will now say the teams. 
Team 7 will be Sasuke Uchiha, Sakura Haruno. Yeah, that's right. Who's on a team with S-A-S-U-K-E? Me, that's W-H-O. Nothing can stop this feeling I have right now. Said Sakura, the loudest female on the planet. And Naruto. Said Aruka, an academy instructor, with a sweat drop going down the side of his face. No no no. I don't want him there ruining my time with S-A-S-U-K-E. Said Sakura, whose feelings on the situation just did a complete 180. Too bad. Your sensei is Kakashi Hitaki. Anyway, teammate consists of Hinata Hyuga, Inazuka Kiba, and Abarama Shino and Kuranai Yuhi. Team 10 consists with Nara Shikamaru, Yamanaka Ino, and Akamaiki Choji and Sarutobi Asuma. Team 11 consists of Menma Uzumaki Namikas, Mito Uzumaki Namikas, and Sai and your team sensei will be Kushina Uzumaki Namikas. Now will everyone wait until your team sensei comes to pick you up? Good luck out in the shinobi world, I am proud of everyone here. Said Aruka and then left out the classroom. Can you believe it, Ka-chan is our sensei. This is so exciting, said Mito to Menma, who was leaning on Hinata's shoulder. Yeah, and with Ka-chan help, I'll be stronger than everyone in the village and become the next Hokage, said Menma. And of course, I'm bring my amazing girlfriend up with me, said Menma while kissing Hinata on her cheek. I'll hold you to it then. She said while wrapping her hands around Menma's back. Ah, you two are so cute, said Mito. Those two expression of love sickens me, thought Naruto. I have to force you to do that to me, Naruto, said Kurama from Naruto's mind. Naruto looked around the classroom to see Sasuke Uchiha look dead at him, with his fangirl Sakura looking at Sasuke with hearts in her eyes. Don't get in my way, is what the eyes said but Naruto didn't care. He had plans for those two that will benefit him in the end. Three hours later Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura were the only people left in the classroom. Naruto was still staring into space, same as Sasuke, and Sakura. She was knocked out. Then the door opened to a man with gravity-defining hair with a mask over his mouth, leaf headband covering his right eye, in a regular Jonan outfit. He looks at the team and looks hard at Naruto with surprise in his eye. Then he says. My first opinion about you all is that I hate you, said Kakashi. Outside of the academy, all right, to get familiar with each other let's introduce each other, shall we? Said Kakashi with a nice smile. Maybe you should go first sensei to see how we should do it. Said Sakura. All right, my name is Kakashi Hataki, what I like to do is none of your concern, what I dislike is too much to say, and my dream is also none of your concern. Okay, so who's next? said Kakashi with another ice smile. We didn't learn anything at all about him. The three thought to themselves. How about you Pinky, introduce yourself, said Kakashi. With a half at her new nickname she says, my name is Haruno Sakura and my likes are, she then looks at Sasuke with hearts in her eyes, my favorite thing to do is, and just like last time she looks at Sasuke like he is a god, and my goal is to, and with a squeal that sounds like she just had an organism she gets closer to Sasuke. Then her attitude does a complete 180 and says, I hate Ino and, and looks at Naruto with fear in her eyes. Not that Naruto cares about her. So even she hates Naruto, that boy's life is so hard. It isn't like I made it better that day. Kakashi says in his mind remembering a day about Naruto but quickly closes off those thoughts. All right Mr. Duck but, introduce yourself, please. Said Kakashi to Sasuke. With a grunt Sasuke says, my name is Uchiha Sasuke, I don't have a lot of likes except for training in my clan's traditions, have too many dislikes to say in one sentence, but my goal, then he looks into Kakashi's only rebel eye and said, to find somebody in this world and to get the truth from him. He says, leaving everyone except Kakashi wondering who he was talking about. Get the truth, does he know something about the massacre nobody else knows? Thought a surprised Kakashi. All right. Mr. Sunshine over here, tell us about yourself. Says Kakashi. Without giving Kakashi a look about his nickname he says, my name is Naruto. I do not use my middle and last name because my so-called family deny to accepted me as their own. I have no likes at all except for sleeping and oranges. I have many dislikes, but they all can be summed up in one thing, I hate Konoha and everything in it. Everyone in it, the builds it holds, its so-called rich history makes me sick. My goal is to be free from this place once and for all. 
says Naruto with a very serious voice. Everyone was surprised about what Naruto said. He basically said he wants to destroy Konoha and become a rogue ninja. Sakura looked at Naruto a little more freighted than before. You're kidding right? You really don't mean that right? Sakura said. I was serious and truthful about the whole explanation. The only thing I might have lied about is that I more than like oranges. They just taste so good. Said Naruto with a little emotion in his voice. Oh, Naruto. Don't I include in one of your likes, right? Said Kurama and the open seal started to burn and hurt Naruto. He had to keep a straight face so no one would notice his pain. It's worse than I thought, and I'm a part of what is in front of me today, thought a sad Kakashi. All right, you may or may not know. But the academy test wasn't the actual genin test. The real one I'm going to give you the real test tomorrow at 7 in the morning at training ground 7. Oh yeah? Don't eat anything cause if you do, then a evil look came onto Kakashi onto his face, dire consequences will be given. Then he gave her an eye smile and before the genin could ask questions about the test healer left in a standard Konoha body flicker. He just leaves like that, I don't like him either. Said Sakura irritated at how Kakashi handled things. It doesn't matter, I will pass this test and become stronger than ever. Said and confident Sasuke. Nevertheless, you two better not ruin things for me, said Naruto. Then he started to walk away from the two, or I'll kill you both. Then he disappeared in a wind shunshun. What? How did he do that? Said a surprised Sakura and an also surprised Sasuke. In Naruto's cell Naruto walked into his cell and closed the door. He then got the chains that, were a good 20 feet in length giving him slack to get to the bathroom in his cell, and locked them around his wrist and got on top of the metal slab that acted as a bed, got his very big blanket and went into a quick slumber. Inside Kurama's seal, ah, Naruto, my favorite person in the world. How was your day? said Kurama. After Kurama manipulated Naruto into opening the seal, she had full control over it as well. She made a forest with loads of trees, animals, lakes, a beautiful place indeed. The middle of the forest was a three-story mansion where Kurama spent her time and lived in. In the backyard was a training ground where Kurama taught Naruto everything. I am fine, Kurama-chan, said Naruto and tried to pass by her, but she caught him in her arms, burying his head in her breast as she hugged him. Oh, no, where do you think you're going, passing by me like you don't want to see me? Aren't I the only person you can talk to, to trust? I am smart enough to know that people who trust someone aren't supposed to torture them. Said Naruto as he pushed Kurama off of him and started to walk into the mansion to sleep. Who are you talking to like that? Kurama said with an angry voice. Naruto keep walking towards the door when he felt something wrap around his weight and pulled him back towards Kurama. It was one of Kurama's tails that pulled him back towards her. Listen here Naruto, said Kurama. Her long hair covered her face. She started radiating ki that he could handle at first but then it started to get too heavy, even for him to absorb and add to his own strength. Then she lifted her head back up and revealed an angry face and red eyes that were glowing with rage. Don't you ever get smart with me, do you understand me, said Kurama told a terrified Naruto who is now showing a very scared face. Why why yes kkk Kurama-chan, said a stuttering Naruto. You need to understand that I was the only one looking out for you in that cell. I'm the only person in the world who cares about you, and you turn your back at me. The nerve of it all, she said. She started to tighten her grip around Naruto causing him to scream in pain. Yes that's right, scream in pain. Face your punishment. This is your fault, the pain you're going through because of your own stupidity. I want to hear you scream. She yelled as her face gained a bloodthirsty look. The sound of Naruto's scream as she tightened her grip around him was like a music to her ears. The shrills of fear, squeals of pain, she loved it all it was turning her on. Lemon rape scene Kurama then threw Naruto on the ground as chains held Naruto's arms and legs down. You are going to learn not to disrespect me, she yelled and started to rip Naruto's clothes off. I'm this out to teach you. Kurama moaned now calmer than ever and now started to pull Naruto's dick out. Get of me. I won't go through this again. Naruto yelled to the top of his lungs trying to get free of the chains that was holding him and trying to wiggle away from Kurama already knowing what she was about to do. Hold still. Kurama yelled as she punched Naruto in the stomach which caused indescribable pain. 
this is your punishment, Naruto, but consider this a favor from me to you, Kurama said fully pulling Naruto's dick out and licking her lips and started to slowly lick up and down Naruto's dick. Suntok pp Kurama, Naruto then let out a moan he tried to hold back. Kurama heard this and knew he tried to hold it back. Him releasing it though meant that he was starting to like it, event though he was denying it. Hum to me it sounds like you want this na to kun She said as she continued her actions on his lower regions. After he was fully erect, she stopped sucking him off she then made chains come from the ground. Let's take this inside, shall we? Said Kurama as she kissed his cheek and dragged Naruto into the master bedroom. Inside master bedroom Kurama threw Naruto on the bed, are you ready na ru too? Kurama asked now taking off her bra showing her DD breast. Just get it over with. Naruto said now not moving at all since she chained him down to the bed with chains that was restricting his movement and chakra flow. He couldn't move any muscles to try free himself and now letting Kurama do whatever she wanted to. About time you stated cooperating with me Naruto-kun. Kurama said with excitement now starting to go back to sucking his dick loving how he was trying to, and failing in do so, holding the moans that she was causing. Um, stop that Kurama, Naruto moaned out. He has experienced Kurama's sexual torture before and he would choose it over the physical torture she also loves giving to him. Kurama has gone down of him before, but her never got used to it. She was sucking like a professional for a while before he was about to come. With a shout he came in her mouth and she was trying to swallow all the cum that was falling out her mouth. Kurama swallow all of it she could and started to lick all of the cum up that feel out her mouth. Im, Naruto kun you really enjoyed that huh? Well, you'll really enjoy this. Kurama said with joy as she then grabbed Naruto's dick and put it between her breast. Kurama, please please stop this. I understand what I did wrong. Said Naruto as he was breathing heavy from his heavy organism. No, I don't think you fully understand when I say, I own you, said Kurama with an evil smile on her face. She then start going up and down, titty fucking him while licking and sucking on the tip of his dick. Going up and down slowly with her breast and sucking hard on the tip really wanting to swallow another load of Naruto's cum. Ah Kurama please, stop the, a moan cut Naruto off, the pleasure was beginning to be too much for him and he didn't even try to hold them back making Kurama smile at him starting to want it. She started doing it more aggressive now starting to get really wet and now wanting Naruto in her. I want you in me Naruto, Kurama said and hovering over Naruto's rock hard dick slowly sliding down on Naruto's dick while giving him a kiss and putting her tongue in his mouth. Almost suffocating Naruto in the process. Kurama released the kiss, letting air get into the lungs of Naruto and Kurama. Then Kurama started bouncing up and down on Naruto, moans out of both of them. She was putting a lot of pressure onto Naruto to the point that it started to hurt him. Kurama was on cloud 9 riding on top of Naruto. Ah, oh my, you're feeling up my insides Naruto. Can't you feel the pleasure I'm giving you, doesn't it feel good? I about to come, do it with me Naruto. And both, with a howl, came hard together. The release of the organism made Kurama land on Naruto's buff chest. They're breathing in sync, which made QB happy. Are you fin finish now? Said a very mentally tired Naruto. No, I wish to continue this. It's making me feel so good. I hope you're ready for round two Naruto. This continued for hours as Kurama made Naruto even more insane than he was now. End Lemon next day, training ground 7, 9.50 a.m. Sasuke and Sakura were the first to arrive at the training ground on time. Sakura walked with Sasuke to the training ground trying to get some alone time with him, only for her to just look at him. An hour later came to the training ground. Sakura was about to yell at him for being late, but before she could Naruto sent some key towards Sakura with an angry glare. That was enough for her to piss on herself. Naruto himself was tired. Kurama did more to him than he thought he did. He only got about a good three hours of sleep before he left the cell late. Sasuke was also tired, you could see the bags underneath his eyes. Nobody at the training ground was happy about their sensei being late either. After ten minutes of waiting Kakashi appears from a shunsen with an ice smile, good morning, everyone. Hope you slept good last night cause it's time to work. You're three hours late, sensei, screamed Sakura which hurt Naruto's sensitive ears. Well, you wouldn't believe this morning if I told you, you see I had to help an old lad. 
I don't care what your excuse if, don't be late next time. Exclaimed Sakura with Sasuke shaking his head in agreement. What? Someone who doesn't let me even say my excuse for being late. That's never happened before said a surprised Kakashi. All right you three, for you to be a ophical gen and you must get these bells from me. Kakashi then reveals two bells that were attached to his pants. Those who get the bells pass, simple enough. But sensei there are only two bells, what about the other person who doesn't get a bell? Well they get sent back to the academy of course. Said Kakashi. Sent back to the academy, said Sakura in a whisper of disbelief. If you don't pass this test, then that's enough said that you are not ready to become a ninja and will be sent to the academy for another year. Said Kakashi in a serious voice. This test will last until noon, then Kakashi put a timer on top of one of the three logs protruding from the ground and set it for a couple of hours. This test shall prove that you all are ready to be ninja, but be careful, this test has a 66% chance of failure. Now, is everyone ready? After three nods were on the genin, a quick shout told the genin to hide among the trees. Sasuke and Sakura did, while Naruto stayed put. Uh, Naruto, you're supposed to go hide somewhere to get an advantage over me. A confused Kakashi said. This test doesn't make sense, I've never heard of a two-man cell. That would decrease the chance of successful missions, since it would put more work on the other two genin. There is a hidden meaning to this, I just don't know what. Said Naruto as he started to walk into the forest with a small pep in his step. If he wasn't isolated for so long, he probably would have figured it out already. Thought Kakashi as he left the area to go find Sakura and Sasuke. With Naruto, Kurama-chan what those the meaning of this test mean, asked a very confused Naruto. You really don't know do you? Him, well I never did teach you about teamwork, since I told you to only trust in me and no one else. Teamwork. What does that mean? Asked Naruto. Teamwork means that you work with your friends to accomplish a certain goal. Said Kurama. What does friends mean? Again asked Naruto. People you trust, like me. But you more than trust me, right Naruto? Said Kurama in a too sweet voice. Naruto didn't reply to what Kurama said, which made her mad, but she didn't do anything to him. He suffered a lot last night anyway. Just thinking about last night put a dark smile on her face. I should go find the Uchiha and Horno, he said to himself as he rushed up into the forest following Sakura's scent of too much perfume. With Sakura if I can find Sasuke, we can team up and get the bells for ourselves so we can leave Naruto by himself. Thought Sakura as she jumped from tree to tree. She truly was afraid of Naruto. She thinks that Naruto was much more stronger than he put on, epically after he used the body flicker technique, yesterday. That was a Chunin move, and he add wind to it, making her believe he really is strong. It will be okay, once me and Sasuke pass, I'll never see him again. Thought Sakura. Then she thought about the test that Kakashi gave the three. Then she stopped her pursuit for Sasuke. Wait of minute, there's no such thing as a two-man cell, only three-man cell. Kakashi says only two people can pass the test, but that was a lie, it has to be. Having a two-man cell will risk mission success rate, making it even more dangerous to take high-class missions. This whole test is about, teamwork. Sakura, now with a determined mind, went to go find both Sasuke and, sadly to her, Naruto. With Sasuke, I don't know what you're trying to do, Kakashi, but I will find you and defeat you and take those bells for myself. Clearly, Sasuke was the dumbass of the team and didn't understand what the test meant at all. Where are you, Hitaki, yelled Sasuke. S-A-S-U-K-E, yelled a tired Sakura as she jumped in front of Sasuke. What do you want, Sakura? If this is another date offer then. No, forget that right now, I have to tell you the true meaning of this test, said Sakura. True meaning. What is she talking about? Thought a confused Sasuke. Sakura then started to explain what the true meaning of the test, and as she was continuing to tell him her theory about it, the more stupid he felt. You got that Sasuke, we have to go find Naruto now. Said an excited Sakura. Yes, find Naruto, I was planning to do that before you told me about the test. Said Sasuke to at least make himself feel smart. Stop lying, you were trying to find the Hataki for yourself and take the bell, in which you were going to fail in doing so. Said Naruto as he appeared in the clearing that Sasuke and Sakura were at. Naruto, you're here, that's good. 
so you know what the test true meaning is, asked Sakura. Yes, we are supposed to use the term, teamwork, and take the bells from the Hataki to pass this test. Apparently, the Uchiha didn't know the true meaning, said Naruto to Sasuke and Sakura. Sasuke you were going to do that, questioned Sakura. Ah, uh, maybe, that doesn't matter right now. We all need to focus and find Kakashi and get the bells together, said Sasuke to recover from his mistake. No need to look for me, I'm right here, appeared Kakashi. It seems you all know the meaning of the test, that's good for you. Now all you have to do is get the bells from me to pass, said Kakashi with an ice smile. No problem, then Sasuke stared doing hand seals and took a breath of air and said Katen, great fireball jutsu and blue and large fireball right at Kakashi who jumped over it. Naruto jumped at Kakashi with two kunai in hand, prepared to slice him in his torso, only for Kakashi to meet him with two kunai, also. While descending back to the ground, the two were parrying each other's attacks. Sakura sent a fleet of shuriken over to Kakashi's body. Kakashi pushed off of Naruto to dodge, also saving Naruto from the shuriken. Kakashi and Naruto continued their assault on each other, and Sasuke jumped in to help, while Naruto was holding back exponentially, not wanting to reveal his true strength yet to Kakashi, was still giving Kakashi some trouble. While Kakashi was handling the two genin in taijutsu, Sakura was preparing some more shuriken. She made sure to lock on to the bells on Kakashi, and lock them directly at the string, and successful from freeing them from Kakashi. Damn she cut the line while I was distracted with the other two, very sneaky, thought Kakashi as he saw Naruto recover the bells and gave them to Sasuke and Sakura, causing Sasuke to smile and Sakura to cheer in delight. Good job, you three, together you took the bells from me and passed the exam. I must say, Naruto, your taijutsu is far more than advanced than a regular genin. Sasuke, that fireball was perfectly conducted and packed a lot of strength in it. Sakura, your accuracy with those shuriken was very impressive indeed. Together you all concurred and took the bells away, which means you all are now officially Team 7. Congrats, said a proud Kakashi to the genin. C-C-C-H-H-H-A-A-A-A. We did it, we're genin now, said a very happy Sakura. Sasuke had a smirk on his face, showing his happiness, while Naruto had a frown on his face. It's almost time, he thought to himself. We shall meet on the bridge on the east side of Konoha at 10 a.m. every day for now on. Tonight, make sure you get a lot of sleep because we start work tomorrow, John, and Kakashi disappeared in a puff of smoke. All right, let's go celebrate, you guys in, asked Sakura. No, we're staying here for the moment, said Naruto. What do you mean, dope? said Sasuke. It means that I'm going to explain something to you too said Naruto as he faced Sasuke and Sakura with a serious expression on his face. Growing up, I've known the Hataki from an past experience that I remember, and it seems as if he isn't going to acknowledge the face of what he did. But that doesn't matter now. What I mean is that the Hataki will not be a good teacher to me or Sakura, only to Sasuke, but even then Sasuke will be as strong as a higher than average genin. Said Naruto. How do you know this? shrieked Sakura because the Hataki feels guilty for not saving his Uchiha friend that died way back when he first became a Jonin. Not only that, but the consul has ordered him to train Sasuke more than Sakura and to not train me at all. Said Naruto. Why would they do that? Asked a now interested Uchiha. Since you are the last Uchiha in Konoha, the consul wants to tie you down to Konoha and believe you can only get stronger here, making sure that you won't follow your older brother's footsteps and leave the village. Sakura now had a shocked face on her because she knew what happened to the Uchiha that night a good four years ago. Sasuke was angry, though. How could the council try to make sure that he didn't turn into his brother? The council didn't know the whole story behind the Uchiha massacre. Those bastards. Thought an angry Sasuke as he clenched his fist to control himself. I know one thing continued Naruto, is that I will not have a weak team, so I will train both of you so when the time is right, we will reveal our true strength together and show Konoha not to fuck with us. Said a dead serious Naruto. You're going to train us, dope. I'm stronger than you, so how can you train me, and Uchiha elite? Laughed Sasuke. Then faster than the two could see, Naruto grabbed Sasuke by his throat and slammed him down to the ground. Gah howled Sasuke in pain from the powerful and sudden attack. Stop this Naruto. 
yelled Sakura as she tried to throw a punch at Naruto, only for him to catch and to knee Sakura in the stomach causing her to spit blood out of her mouth. If you really think I'm weak then you shall soon change your mind after this. Said Naruto as he started his assault on Sasuke and Sakura. He continued his attack for a good half hour. The two tried to fight back, but they were facing a ninja who could face the Hokage and win with so much as a scratch on him. After a while, Sasuke was slammed down into the ground, bruised and open wounds all over his body, Sakura looking in the same right beside Sasuke. Naruto then slammed his foot on Sasuke's stomach causing him to throw up blood on the ground. With his foot still on top of Sasuke, Naruto looked down at Sasuke, an angry expression on his face. Are you stronger than the Hokage? asked Naruto. Sasuke didn't answer him, causing Naruto to get angrier and stomped on his stomach again causing indescribable pain to Sasuke. I said are you stronger than the Hokage? yelled Naruto. No. Wheezed out Sasuke, are you stronger than the Hitaki? No, he replied, are you stronger than you brother? No, I'm not, are you stronger than me? yelled Naruto. I'm, no, I'm as weak as a regular genin, that's what I keep running away from, saying that I'm an Uchiha doesn't make me strong at all, it's just my last name, said a very sad Sasuke. It's good that you understand your limit. If you listen to me, you will get stronger if you listen to me and not the Hitaki, don't do what Konoha wants you to do. Both of you, said Nero. Sakura and Sasuke looked at each other to see if this was the right choice. After a while, they both nodded their heads to Naruto, agreeing to his proposition. Good. Then he grabbed them both and they all left the training ground. Outside Konoha Hospital the new team appeared in a red flash in front of the hospital, Sasuke and Sakura wondering how they got there. Naruto then went to his pocket and gave a stack of money to the two and said, tell the doctors that you both came back from a terrible mission and were hurt very bad. This will cover the medical bills. You two need to be in full health by tomorrow because after we finish our D-ranked mission, we start training. Then he started to walk away but turned around to Sasuke and said, Oh yeah Uchiha, do me a favor and turn off those cursed eyes, goodbye. And he disappeared in a red flash again. Sasuke didn't understand what he was talking about at first, but then he took off his headband and used it as a mirror to see his eyes were now red with two black tomes in each eye. Sakura and Sasuke looked at each other, before walking into the hospital. Two months time. It's been two months since Naruto whooped Sasuke and Sakura's ass and took them in as his apprentices. What Naruto told Sasuke and Sakura about the Kakashi only training Sasuke was correct, Kakashi would only train Sasuke, and when he did, it really wasn't nothing serious because of Kakashi's laziness. When the team would finish their D-rank missions and Kakashi would dismiss the team, the three genin would head to training ground 7 every day for two months. Naruto first found out that Sasuke had fire and lightning elements while Sakura had the earth nature element. Sasuke has practice in his clan's jutsu. After him and Naruto went into the Uchiha clan library, which was old and abandoned, they took most of the fire, lightning, and earth jutsu they saw. Sasuke also started in training in Kenjutsu, which he took in like water to a sponge. Naruto made sure that he trained him in his chakra control and then started on mid chunin level Jutsu and higher. Sasuke also learned everything he could about his Sharingan, and to make sure he knew that the it was another tool, and that it didn't make him better than everyone else. As of right now, Sasuke was at a mid to high chunin level at ninjutsu, high chunin at kenjutsu, low chunin at genjutsu, mid chunin at taijutsu, overall making him at a mid chunin level. Sakura, on the other hand, was a secret prodigy. She learned over 75% of the earth style jutsu from the Uchiha clan library that was inside of her chakra level. She had perfect chakra control, and took into medical jutsu. She also learned the chakra scalpel technique and added it to her taijutsu, so it was almost like the Hoiga clan's taijutsu. The earth jutsu she learned were mostly defensive, but then she made up for it in her genjutsu. She was better than Sasuke at genjutsu, which almost pissed him off, but if he demanded her to tell him her secret, Naruto would beat him down again. Sakura would also add chakra to her fist, with her perfect chakra control, to make herself stronger, just like a certain Sanon. As of now, Sakura was a mid chunin at ninjutsu, low genin at kenjutsu, mid chunin at genjutsu, low chunin at taijutsu, overall making her at a low chunin level. 
Sasuke and Sakura also came to respect Naruto, he took the time to train them when the council was only going to train Sasuke only a little. They understood the fact that Naruto doesn't care for them, which was something they tried to change, only to fail time and time again. Naruto said that he doesn't trust anyone and loves only himself. But after every time he said that, he would grunt like he was in pain and the two could have swore they smelt the smell of burnt flesh in the air. The training the team did was always done in secret, and nobody would even catch on of it either. Now they were about to receive their first C-rank mission from the Hockage. Mission Hall Konoha, somebody get this damn cat of me, screeched Sakura as she held the demon cat of all Konoha. Ah come on Sakura, it isn't that bad, stated Kakashi with an eye smile and giving the cat to its rightful owner. So sensei do you have another mission for us? I prefer it to be a higher one this time, I believe the team is ready for it. Well there is this C rank I can give them, said Minato. A C rank. Let's get it sensei, I'm so sick and tired of painting fences and dig up plants. Let's do some real ninja missions, exclaimed Sakura to Kakashi. Hold on Sakura, let's see what the mission is first. Sensei, said Kakashi asking if Minato would keep reading. It's a simple mission where you are to guard the bridge builder, Tazuna, back to Nami no Kuni, the land of the waves. Let him in, said the Hogak. As soon as he said that, an old man who looked over the age of 60, and the smell of alcohol reeking off of him. This is the team that's going to protect me, they're nothing but little kids. The black-haired kid looks like there is a duck ass, that girl's hair is making me go blind, and the blonde, he then looked at Naruto and shivered, he gives me the creeps. After trying to control Sakura and Sasuke because they were trying to kill Tazuna, they went off to go get their supplies, but before they left, Minato said something to Naruto. Look at me before you go demon, he said to Naruto. Naruto turned to Minato and looked him dead in the eye. What? You behave yourself during this mission, if not, there will be consequences, understood, he said. TCH, you do not scare me, Naruto said and left out the room. When he left, Minato saw Sasuke glaring at him before he left, too. What did I ever do to him? Minato thought as he continued his work. One hour later, an hour outside Konoha this trip was boring to Naruto. All the walking they were doing was making him bored. He would have enjoyed it if he was by himself. He liked being outdoors, seeing he is a half-fox demon, and that he spent half his life living in a cell, being outdoors was great. It was the people he was with that made him mad. Kakashi was over there giggling to himself while he was reading his smut he calls, a work of art, Sakura was running around seeing all the animals and being excited in leaving the village for the first time, and Tazuna was drinking the walk away with a heavy smelling alcohol, which was affecting Naruto's nose a lot. The only other person that had some common sense was Sasuke, as he was just walking and watching out for enemies, which Naruto was grateful for. Then, out of the corner of his eye, Naruto saw a small puddle of water right beside a tree and noticed it was a genjutsu quickly. He saw that Kakashi, Sasuke, and Sakura noticed as well, Tazuna was too busy tripping over himself, not that he would notice anyway. Once they passed by the puddle, he sensed that two people came out and was ready to attack. Naruto didn't feel like getting his nails dirty though so he gave it to the other two genin. Uchiha, Haruno, deal with it was all he said. The two quickly turned around and met the two ninja with kunai in hand and parried the poison claws they had. They all jumped back and recharged at each other. Sasuke, before meeting his opponent again, took another kunai and threw it to the shuriken chain the two rogue ninja had attached to their clawed hands, and stuck it to a tree. Both ninjas fell down on the ground because of the attack. Sakura then stabbed the two in the arm that didn't have the claw hand on it, making it impossible for the two to move either arm. Sasuke and Saskara then put kunai to the rogue ninja's neck, signifying the defeat. Wow, good job you two. You handle the situation well, he said to the two. He then tied the two and recognized who they were. These two are Gozu and Meizu, the demon brothers, and are ex-ninja of Kirigakur, the land of mist. They are Chunin-leveled ninja, which brings me to ask why they are trying to kill you Tazuna. Said a serious Kakashi to a shaking Tazuna. All right. I lied about the mission difficulty when I gave the mission to Konoha because Wave doesn't have the money to pay for a higher ranking mission. The only I could have afforded was AC rank. Then he started to fake cry and said, it's okay if you want to quit, I'll understand. 
but when I die, my daughter might kill herself and my grandson may cry for months cursing Connor's name, but it's all okay. A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A. Then he started to laugh and cry. He wants to make us feel bad. They thought as everyone except Naruto sweat dropped. Kakashi then turned to the genin and said, it depends if you all want to continue this mission. Are you don't want to, I won't blame you and we can head home now. Said Kakashi. Instantly, Naruto replied, there's no way in hell I'm going back to Konoha after I just got out. I rather deal with this drunk old man than the villagers and my family. He said in a dead tone. Everyone, except for Tazuna, wasn't surprised about Naruto's answer, as he expressed many times his hatred for Konoha. Kakashi saw that Sakura and Sasuke wanted to continue as well, in which they did, receiving many thanks from Tazuana. Hours later Ocean the team and Tazuna were on a boat take them to the land of waves, and they all see the bridge being built in the mist. Wow, that's the biggest bridge I've ever seen. Why do you build it in this heavy mist, Mr. Tazuna, asks Sakura. We do it to hide it from Gato, the tyrant who taken over Wave. If we can build it, we can bring money into Wave, saving the land. He wisely stated. When the group made it back on the land, they started walking again. After a while, something was rustling in a bush, in which Naruto attacked. After what sounded like a struggle, Naruto came back with a rabbit between his canine-like teeth. He took and it out and said, this is dinner, and put it back in his mouth. While everyone was kinda freaked out at the display Kakashi noticed something. That rabbit's fur is white, but it's not that season anymore, meaning it's kept in the inside. That means. Everyone get down now. Kakashi tackled Tazuna to the ground. The rest of the genin ducked down to dodge a flying sword going over their heads. The sword lodged itself into a tree and a man jumped on top of it. He had grey-like skin, bandages over his mouth, no shirt revealing his bare chest, grey pants, black sandals, and no eyebrows whatsoever. Look who I ran into this time, Hitaki Kakashi, the copy ninja and mater of a thousand justsu because of your implanted sharigan. Said the man. And your Momaki Zabuza, ex-Kiri ninja but left when you weren't appointed Mizukage, you're also honored the Seven Swordsmen of Mist. Explained Kakashi. Well aren't I honored, the copy ninja even knows about me, my name must be out there. Well I didn't come here to talk about names, I can for the bridge builder, hand him over, yelled Zabuza. The genin then brought out their kunai and made protective stances over a terrified Tazuna. Look at this, little kids that are trying to play ninja, what a sight to see, Zabuza joked. Kids, have you ever killed someone yet, because when I was your age, then a fierce look came upon his face as he released a tremendous key towards the genin. I had already a whole classroom of kids, he yelled. Sakura and Sasuke were taking the key better than they would have if they didn't train under Naruto, but the key was still making them shake a little. Naruto then smiled at Zabuza, his insane side starting to come out because of the key towards him and said, a classroom of kids, that's child's play, I've killed a mob of people when I was six, he said with a bloodthirsty smile. Then, unknown to anyone, Naruto used his mysterious ability and absorbed all of Zabuza's key to him. Once done, he took a deep breath and smiled. Let's start, I've been itching for a while to fight. Sasuke and Sakura started to back away. No, Naruto, this person is beyond your level, stand back and let me handle it, said an ignorant Kakashi. Then, mist started to form around the area making eyesight brought down to zero. You'll have to find me first Kakashi, I am a professional at silent killing, as you may know. Zabuza said as he disappeared in the mist. Shit. I'll have to take him seriously now, thought Kakashi as he revealed his Sharingan. Zabuza started to list off all the points he could attack to kill instantly, trying to scare the genin, only to scare Sasuke and Sakura, Naruto just held back and let Kakashi handle the man. He did think he saw an orange tree around here somewhere. And quickly as he could, he put his claws on and turned around to block Zabuza's Kubakiri Boko slash. He too started to move around the area, fighting each other. Zabuza used a downward slash, trying to cut Naruto in half, only for Naruto to use his superior speed and dodge, then give Zabuza a deep cut on his stomach. He jumped back and screamed out, Fuyutan, Gale Palm, and sent a blast of wind directly at Zabuza's back which hit him hard causing him to throw up blood from his mouth. Damn that shit hurt. This kid isn't a joke. Thought Zabuza as he saw Naruto look at his right claw that was covered in his blood. 
it's been a while. I should just rip him to shreds, forget the Hataki and holding back my power, I can kill them all right here. Thought Naruto as he started shaking in excitement with her insane look on his face, his red eyes flashing dangerously. No, said Kurama from his mind, you must stick to plan, calm down for now and I promise you'll get to kill later, Naruto-kun, she said dead serious. Reluctantly, Naruto calmed down and jumped back towards Sasuke, Sakura, and Tazuna. Why did you stop? You were winning Naruto, whispered Sakura. With a growl he answered, because Kurama-chan told me to stop. And then blew out some fire from his mouth. Kurama-chan, thought Sakura and Sasuke, who heard the small conversation from his position. After a while, Kakashi got himself captured in Zabuza's water prison technique. Run. You can't handle him, he's too strong for you all. He yelled seemingly forgot about Naruto's performance on Zabuza earlier. I've got a plan, said Sasuke ignoring Kakashi's cries of protest. Sakura then formed a wall of earth using Doton, mud wall that hid the shadow clones that Naruto was forming. Then, Sasuke jumped from over the wall and threw a fuma shuriken at the water clone that Zabuza formed to protect him. The clone raised his sword, ready to protect himself, but noticed the shuriken underneath it as well. Demon windmill shadow shuriken, smirked Sasuke as he watched as the shuriken close into the clone. The clone braced itself and used a downward slash to cut through the real shuriken and destroying the fake shuriken. He looked up to only see two more shurikens being thrown by two Narutos. It quickly jumped over the shuriken and it was now heading for the real Zabuza. The shuriken then transformed to reveal the real Naruto, now running towards Zabuza on the water with claws ready to slash through flesh. Damn, I got to move. And he released his hand from water prison, freeing Kakashi in the process, and jumping away from Naruto's deadly claws. I'll take care of that brat right now. Sutan, water dragon technique, he yelled and sent a large water dragon towards Kakashi and Naruto, only for another water dragon to counter it. What? My Justsu. Who did that? Then he remembered who he was going up against, the copy ninja of Konoha. This is it Zabuza, yelled Kakashi, and faster than Zabuza made hand size for his next Justsu. Sutan, great waterfall Justsu technique, and Kakashi sent a flood of water towards Zabuza, which hit him with great force, knocking him back to shore and heavily damaged. When Naruto and Kakashi got back on land to end Zabuza, two Senbans implanted themselves into Zabuza's neck, effectively killing him. Then a masked Kiri ninja came up to Kakashi. Thank you, Hataki-san, for helping me kill this man. Kiri has been hunting him down for some time now, and because of you we can rest easier now. Said the masked ninja with a female voice. Glad to help, he said with an eye smile and he put his headband back over his Sharingan. With a nod of her head she took Zabuza's body and disappeared. Good work team, the teamwork you displayed was amazing. Now while we're getting to wave, watch over my body for me. He said as his one eye rolled to the back of his head and fainted. One of you two are holding his body, Tazuna, please lead the way. Said a calm Naruto. Of course, right this way. You can rest easy at my house. He said as him and Naruto passed by Kakashi's almost dead looking body. Sasuke and Sakura looked at each other and sweat dropped together. I'll get his legs. Said a depressed Sasuke. I'll get his head. Said an equally depressed Sakura. Tazuna's house the group came up to a two-story house in the forest. Before getting there, they had to go through town, and they saw the poverty that took over the people there. Children dressed in rags, people looking dead because of lost hope, stores with a lack of food, just about everything was broke. The only person who was comfortable there was Naruto, having gone through the same things and then some. When Tazuna knocked on the door, a beautiful with long black hair, black eyes, smooth-looking skin, wearing a red sweater and black dress skirt answered the door. Father, she yelled as she jumped on Tazuna and held onto him in an impressive grip. Hold on, Tsunami. You know I have a bad back, damn. He said as he tried to hold onto his daughter. Tsunami, these are the ninja who I hired to protect me and have done so very well. He said. Thank you for protecting my father, I am forever in your debt. She said with a wonderful smile that makes Sasuke blush. She then noticed Kakashi and told him to lay him down on the couch inside. Anari, your grandfather is home. Get down here, yelled Tsunami. A boy came from upstairs, with a blue and white stripped hat, 
blue overalls, and a white shirt underneath who look around the age of seven. Hello, Grandpa, the boy said as he held on to his grandfather. Naruto, not used to seeing true love, walked out of the house because the situation in there was uncomfortable and walked back into town. In town Naruto walked around and saw buildings which people lived in that looked like they were going to be demolished. The roads were dirty, everyone was skinny, and no happiness was seen. Yup, he felt real comfortable now. He found a hill and sat on it looking at the town below. It was all Gato's fault that the town was in such a state. Everyone had went through something living in Wave, someone should help them. Make this land yours, said Kurama. What? asked Naruto. I said make this land yours, we need a base of operations and I am not going to let you live in a cell for the rest of your life. When we leave Konoha, we can come here and make our moves away from Konoha. She explained. Yes, you are right. Everyone here is miserable, and I can see myself in some kind of way in them. I will take Gato down and start to make base here. But we need allies, but who? asked Naruto. Start with that Zabuza guy, he isn't dead because of the Senban, so we can convince him to be on our side. Then we can start to rebuild Wave to my image, said Kurama. All right, it is decide, Wave will be mine, said Naruto as he headed back to the house. A week later Kakashi had woken up and explained to the genin that Zabuza was still alive. He said that he would train them in tree climbing, but they said they already knew that. He asked if they knew water walking, which they all shocked their heads to again. Kakashi settled with trained Sasuke for now while Sakura and Naruto did their own thing. Naruto woke up and went downstairs to see Tsunami cleaning some fish. He walked over to watch how she did it, interested in anything that had to deal with meat. Good morning, Naruto-san. She said. Hello, he said in a dead voice. She continued to clean without care that Naruto was watching, and Naruto saw the knife she held in her hands to clean the fish. The item in your hand, it is called a knife right, he asked. You don't know what a knife is, she looked at him funny. I never knew what it was, I just remember them when I was a kid when the villagers stabbed me with them. He said like it was a regular thing. Tsunami, however, jumped when she heard this. What? Why would they do that to you, a poor child? She said as kneeled down to get to Naruto's height. He then explained that the village considers him a demon because of what he held and his life in the village and how he was treated during his whole life. When he was finished, Tsunami was openly crying at Naruto. She then hugged Naruto, which surprised him because Kurama's hug would hurt him. Oh you poor child, you've never been loved, your family and neighbors hate you for something out of your control, that's too cruel. She cried on his shoulder. Why do you care, can't you see that I'm a bad thing to be around? He said to Tsunami. No, Naruto, I can tell you're a good boy, even after what happened six years ago. You were just angry and went out of control. What you really want is someone to talk to and truly understand you. She said. When Naruto heard this his eyes got wide. Truly understand, but I thought Kurama-chan said that she was the only person who can truly understand me, not this woman. He thought. Tsunami then released Naruto and told him to be with her whenever he could so she could teach him about anything he needed to know. Naruto then asked her, how would I need to restore Wave into a proper village? Tsunami smiled at him and said, what the people of Wave need is hope. Everyone believes that they're doomed to die because of Gato, but I know someone will save us and take down Gato. She said, and how do I give the people hope? He asked. Tsunami widened her eyes when she heard his question. Is he really going to try and help, she thought as she looked at him. Then she answered his question. Maybe give the people something to eat or rebuild the house that are close to falling down. She said. Naruto nodded to Tsunami and walked out the door, ready to go give his future people whatever this, hope, word meant. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.